So it's a new week and we are on the way back to Jokmok. This week, two options. It will be a wonderful, lovely dog sledding week down to Jokmok. Or it will be kind of adventure that we don't really want. The weather forecast is very promising and they promise cold nights, warm sunny days. So I hope, really hope, that we can continue as plan A. If we continue as plan A, this will be the only week this winter where we have done plan A. <laughs> so with me this week I have Mette and Lasse. They're from Denmark. They've never been dog sledding before but they have been up in the mountain a lot. Skiing around and doing tours here. So they know little bit about outdoor life and I also have Mickey and Melly with me on this tour again second time this winter they was on one of the tour before when it was snowing a lot but hopefully we don't get snow or rain this week hopefully we get a normal sunny wonderful <laughs> lovely week this this time Right now I'm looking for a spot where we can make coffee and I just passed by several super nice spots. But, as you know, if you buy a budget guide, you don't get the best spot. So now I'm looking for some more crappy spots. This time of the year it's also more and more reindeer herders coming up with the reindeer. So I've been in contact with several of the reindeer herders, check with them where is the reindeer, is it still okay that they're passing by the area. And everybody say yes, it's okay. So right now we're traveling and we are not in the middle of the way for the reindeer herder. They was here first with the reindeer as I usually say and after that we got started with tourists. So the tourist company like me, we had to show respect and we had to let them do their work. We are here for pleasure. It, even if it's work for me, my groups are here for pleasure, we move if they need the area. Now it's two weeks until they will give birth, start in giving birth to the calf. And they are in a very sensitive time of the year. Tanna! When the reindeer give birth to, to calf or just when they're pregnant, if they get disturbed, they can throw the calf and that's not nice. So then they just drop the calf and I don't want to be responsible for that. Here we find a windy spot where we can make coffee.
So after 20 km over the mountain, we stopped for a coffee and now we finally arrived to CPR. It's quite warm for the dog. You can see how they ventilate now when they're here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's warm, but it's no problem because they could, can cool off from the snow. So. Probably we will try to leave earlier tomorrow. But it was a good first day. Today we have passed through Circa's Sami group. Tomorrow we're going into next next group called Yokokaska. So the Sami works in a kind of cooperation areas. I don't know the English name for that. Tomorrow we go into Yokokaska and they are also super nice people. And there is no problem until that and the, after that we're going into Turpan and Turpan is right now just moving the reindeer herds on the same trail as we plan to go so all the reindeer herds I've been in contact with in Turpan are also very very helpful and nice so I'm sitting here and making a kind of plan so I know uh, where they are because I get message from it is four or five groups that come in with the reindeers and they really don't want to be on the trail when they come so they are super helpful and uh, it looks like that we maybe can coming through the area without being in the middle of the way for them I also looking at the optional routes but it's quite difficult this time of the year because it starts getting warm so if this don't work we need a backup plan it's my job to avoid making problem for for the reindeer herders so during the next two days we will see what plan we will come up with and uh, there is small windows between these two, between these different groups that are moving because they don't want to mix up their, re their reindeer herds, their smaller reindeer herds. So in this, <coughs> and they also prefer to move the reindeers in the morning. So in these gaps between the smaller groups, we are maybe able to go through the area. I just had to know where they are and, and see when they start and where they go. Um, if we manage, the advantage we have from this is that we actually have super good trail where all the rangers have been walking. I think it's time to go to bed. We are going up 6 o'clock tomorrow and then we're having breakfast and try to take off during the if we can start early tomorrow, we will actually have advantage of the frozen snow and that will help, will help us a lot. We'll see.
So daily morning routines, breakfast, toilet, feeding dogs and so on. And now we are ready to go very soon. The dogs are eager to go, they had bad appetite this morning, but that's not so. That's normal this time of the year when it's warm. Uh, yeah, but now go. Now we have done the uphill and as you see we start with the downhill now. This downhill is real serious downhill so we had to be really careful on the way down using the brake a lot. We will see how the snow is and how the trail is. Plan A, B, C as you know it never goes as planned. So what I've done here is that I have connected all the dogs in the color instead of in the harness. That reduced the power 50-70% probably and uh, you can go down with control. In downhills like this when you do several hundred meters in just one or two kilometers then you really need the control and this is a really good technique that I can recommend. Yeah, yeah. I made it! <laughs> Sanna. Happy? Happy, yes. <laughs> and a bit scared. <laughs> this was terrible. Yeah. And nice at the same time. <laughs> Are you happy, Mika? Yes, very happy. So here you see what I've done. I have put a hook like this. Instead of connecting this in the harness, I connect it like this in the in the color. And then when I go, they only pull with the color. So I reduce the power a lot. And if something goes wrong, um, everything is much easier to handle. And it's much easier to not crash. Now, coffee Gandalf. Gandalf, do you want coffee? Gandalf never want coffee. Now it's coffee Gandalf. It's coffee Gandalf. Coffee Gandalf. Mm, Nisi Gandalf. 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 The crazy starting dog. Slimy. Now the coffee pause is okay, ready and we got some sun and now we had to go but I think we will have to stop very soon because suddenly it's super warm. <sighs> super warm. So now we're down on Lidar and you see the mountain behind us where we come from. Up there, tree line, above the tree line and down through the forest. <laughs> yeah, now we're here. Now it starts getting really warm and uh, I'm looking for a 
place where we can stop for a while and I'm thinking about the plans how we should continue this tour it is too warm now not for us but for the dogs so what I want to do now is finding a spot where we can rest waiting for colder temperature lower temperature and um, then see if we continue tonight for a couple of hours or if we just sleep until tomorrow when you travel this time of the year when you travel all time of the year in the mountain you had to be very open flexible and <laughs> thinking about different solutions and follow the nature not struggle against the nature stress takes you nowhere in the bush So finally the sun has set down now and it's amazing how fast the temperature is dropping. Already just before the sun was under the horizon the snow start being... See here, look! It starts freezing again. So now it's cold enough to continue and it's more or less 9 o'clock and we will continue uphill this is much much better temperature working temperature for the dogs so we continue uphill and then we put up our camp and sleep some hours I maybe think we are in the bed 11 o'clock maybe we'll drive one hour more and then put up the camp and then into the sleeping bag we have already fed the dogs and having dinner and all that thing so now just put up the tent and go to bed but first one hour on the sled The snow is really really good now for driving. It's not perfect but it's good and uh, the dogs are eager to go but I think anyway it's a good decision to stop here very soon.
so <sighs> it's actually quite cold wind outside and now it's time to go to bed so the last stretch up here was very nice a little bit soft trail but very nice now we camping <coughs> now we're camping above the tree line and it's maybe four or five meter per second wind not more and that's super good because then we get air circulation in the tent and we will not have so much uh, condensation tonight see here beside me we have also Annie Annie the fin. so every night every evening I walk around a little bit and say good night to the dogs and it's good because then I get warm also have a last check at the dogs I'm really looking forward to my sleeping bag now Yeah, this was a nice day. Time for bed. Actually, not super tired, but just waking up and want to sleep the whole day. Six o'clock, and it's time to pack up the sleds. I don't know if it's packing up or loading up or whatever. Oh, oh that is my second alarm on my telephone and my telephone is in my sleeping bag oh. lamp So, every morning it's a fight when I want to stay in my sleeping bag. This stove's MSRXGK. I really love it. You can find a review of it. On our YouTube channel, I put the link somewhere. <coughs> it's super sturdy. I, you can run over it with the tank, and it's still working. And yeah, really good one. Look. You see, the feeling of waking up when it's looked like this. <coughs> totally si silent except that someone has a stove inside the tent making hot water. Yeah, this is so beautiful. I don't think I'm filming so much now from the start because now it's early. We have a few hours with good temperature and we just want to start out so we see what I feel oh so warm so much running now we've done several hundred meters uphill up to Kabla and you can see Axe far away and the 
valley over to Saltaluta. Down there, Subat, Subat Yaure, Chakali from a total different view as usually. Skerf is behind, Rapa Valley goes in there. And then you have the Porte Massive there, that's top. Peaks over 2,000 meters. And that's Sarek Natural Park. I think this is one of the most beautiful places where you can look into Sarek from outside the natural park. It's so steep uphill down there, so... Yeah. Really hard work out. So now the sun is high and we have a cold wind up here, but it starts getting warmer. And I think when we're down on the forest on the other side, I think we have to stop quite fast and then try to sleep. And then driving next night. We are after our plan. Too late start today. Sleeping four or five hours tonight, that was too much. We just had to go. This terrain is so beautiful with the spruce forest and the hills around with the cliffs and so on. I really like this. Now we have stopped here and as you see, super warm. The dogs are really warm, but the snow is amazing. It's still, see, I can still walking on the snow beside the main trail. So now we are stopped because of the temperature. But we also do this because we want to change our day rhythm so we're leaving from here like 9 10 o'clock tonight and then we make 40k and then stop for next day so now I'm walking around and searching for water we have a small creek down here How should I reach that water without falling into it? Oh, that's not nice. Oh, mamma mia. How deep is it here? <coughs> oh, you get fucking wet if you're falling in there. So now you see this water hole, clear running water. Here we're standing on the ground and can reach the water without falling into the water. It's hard work, but uh, uh, I think it's better to make a good water hole where you can reach the water on a safe way instead of trying to... Uh, falling in this is not nice.
these kind of tools when you're out late winter, late spring winter, then you have to learn to follow the nature. You can't fight the nature. If it's warm, it's warm. If it's slushy, it's slushy. And sometimes you just had to accept that nature is very powerful and it's easier to work with the nature and working against the nature. Our plan now is to stop here for a while and feeding the dogs four, five, six something and then uh, continue nine or ten o'clock. So <laughs> now it's eleven o'clock and look, look, eleven o'clock and the trail is super hard again. It's few stars and we have had dinner, we have been sleeping and we are all tired and I'm looking forward to a sleeping bag but now we're doing 40 km while the trail is good. <sighs> this was a warm day but now we have a very good cold night in front of us. And the dogs are also more Happy to go now when it's like this. Here we go. So right now we're on the trail again and it's so good trail. And we have the northern light. Wow. I had to stop and show them. Dana! Dana! I don't know if you see it. There is a northern light thing up there in the sky. You see it? I take down that so. Oh, it's also behind. Stanna! Stanna! Do you see the northern light behind yeah, you? I saw it. Behind you? Yeah. Holy. Yeah, I saw it back. <laughs> good trail. Northern light. It's a good start of the night. Here is Orinarka. Now we have reached Voskonyao and look. You see? Really good snow. Almost too hard. Here you see we have open water. But the trail goes there, so <laughs> no swimming tour today. There was something in the forest beside the trail. I don't know. Dog react a little bit strange. I don't think it was reindeer because they're used to the reindeer. The brown bear stopped waking up right now, so. Driving like this, it's super easy to forget to drink tea and coffee or eating something. But now it's time for lunch. I don't know if it's lunch or brunch or... But <laughs> anyway, we're going to eat a sandwich and something to drink. <sighs> and I also take a chance to check some of the feet of the dogs. But now we'll continue. We're staying in a good speed, 20 to 15 km per hour. But we try to slow down as much as possible. Five 
five o'clock and it's time for the sleeping bag. Mickey and Melly is having hot chocolate and looking at the sunrise. Mette and Lars is already in their sleeping bags. And Annie and me is on the, our way. Annie is also very, very tired because probably she was not sleeping so much last day. She was looking around a lot. Now she's in the tent here sleeping with me. So we will see if these shoes have these inner shoes. You see, now they're moisture. We've been in water today. Yeah. Nice to take it off and be able to dry them. I also have some tea. So now a cup of tea and then sleep. I must show you how it looks outside. Almost 12 o'clock and I've been sleeping and awake and sleeping awake. <sighs> Me and Nani is in this tent. Oi, oi, oi. It's warm, it's blue sky, I can hear the wind and I think it's time for lunch. Croque monsieur. And coffee made on fire. When you travel like this, And change the day rhythm for for a short while you don't get used to it so you get a little bit more tired but it's really fantastic so yesterday when we arrived here after 40 kilometer traveling on the, the trail the dog was not even tired so they had possibility to continue another 40k probably they just needed something to eat or rest a while and then they could continue I think we have 70 kilometers back to Jokmok from here and it's on the Thursday oh, we have two more days to travel that's great
Oh, it's the coffee. Ah, it's not poisoned. I don't We have had a fantastic day here. This is Karas Lake and normally I go here a lot with canoe. You can find videos at our YouTube channel from canoe tours here. This is really, really nice area. Today we have parked our dogs behind here because I didn't want the dog to see the reindeer when they come moving. And actually we didn't recognize that a couple of hundred rangers and some snowmobile passed by out here. They stopped with the herd for half hour or something over there. And I thought it was people fishing. <laughs> the dogs said nothing. It was totally cool. As I have said before, this tour is very interesting because of the reindeer herders we meet. I also just get the message from next guy who's starting tomorrow and uh, uh, his original plan was to start next week but he, he's going now and I can really understand that because when you're working out here you had to follow the rhythm of the nature if it's good good uh, conditions with the snow you just had to go but uh, that gives us a new problem and that we're going to meet them on the trail. So I try to calculate together with them where are we going to meet. It seems like he's more relaxed than I am because I really don't want to come on the trail with the dogs when they come with the reindeer. So the plan is to go and then maybe stop somewhere and wait until they pass by and then continue go that would make us late on the trail but uh, yeah that's life then we had to catch up next day it's still possible that we could reach Jokmok in the last day and if not yeah then we had to go to the road and get picked up by car the important thing for us now is that we actually not acting as assholes and staying in the middle of the trail with our dogs when they're coming with the reindeers. After the break, the snow finally frees again and we can continue the journey. While riding the dog team, over the lakes we got a fantastic sunrise. We met one more reindeer herd along the trail, but the reindeer herders was helpful and we could leave the trail and they could pass by. The reindeer herders in our area are really super. Big thanks to Sirkas, Yoko Kaska and Torpon. One more time we had to rest on the side of the lake. The last stretch into Jokmok was easy. Annie had to ride on my sled after a crash on the slippery ice. But everything else was just fine.
And a big thanks to Mickey Melle, Mette and Lassie for following this tour. This was really really fun. I hope I see you again out there. And thank you for watching this video and subscribing, giving thumbs up, leaving comments. It's so nice that you are out there. See you in the next video. Ciao.